Hallelujah. Oh, it's good to be home. <laughs> yes. Very good to be home. But it was wonderful. We had an awesome time. Thank you, Master. Glory. How's everybody? Plus, and I leave it was pretty weak, but it's good enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, I can sense that aggressive anointing. If it came any stronger, I'd run through walls. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Timothy three, please. Thank you, Master. We need to lay a quick foundation. So verse one. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But know this that in the last days are we in the last days. If you don't know, you know it now. Amen. De Perilous times will come. Are we in perilous times? <laughs> just go out your front door and you'll see perilous times. Of course, if you're on the campus, you won't see it so much, but just go down the street. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, <laughs> proud, Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. It sounds like the whole Congress. Hmm. We are in these times right now. It's tremendous. It's increasing. More exposure, more lies, more deception. And more people biting the bait. I can't tell you how many times I was attacked for not wearing a mask. I kept telling them, why do I need one if you're wearing one? And what are you afraid of? Obviously, they're not Christians. Or maybe they are. But they're deceived. In verse 6, it says, For this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they are not able to deny the old man of self, and they're always learning the wrong things that promote pride, false humility. They are resisting the reality of truth, and they're never able to advance in the kingdom of God. Is everybody with me? Now as Janus and Jabers resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, and theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be in Antioch at Icium in Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all, the Lord did what? Delivered me. Yes, and all those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and becoming more deceived. But you must continue in the things which you've learned and have been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. That from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. See, they've joined the ranks of Antichrist, regimes of impostors, of forms of godliness. But they are evil, deceived, and they are one breath away from hell unless they repent and turn. 
We see this everywhere right now. It's increasing and getting worse and worse. Amen? In 2 Timothy 4, it's the next chapter. Verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. In other words, declare the truth. Amen? Be ready in season and out of season. <laughs> Be prepared, alert, consistent. Somebody got it. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. <laughs> yes. Be prepared, alert, consistent, rebuke. Make sure you're connected. Do teaching <laughs> and endure all things. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from truth and be turned away to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. What is he saying? He said, many will not endure the truth and begin to compromise the truth and drift into deception and false religions that promote the flesh and carnal way of life. They call themselves Christians, but they're promoting a false identity, sur surrendering their security clearance that, access, that allows them access to the things of God. I want you to understand something, I, and I might have shared this already in certain things, but the Lord has shared with me in an important level what's going on right now. He said the shaking is going to continue. He said he's shaking everything that can be shaken so that those who can't be shaken can access things. See, in the world, in the military, remember this is a military operation. It's not a religious operation. Your identity of who you are in Christ is your ID. That ID allows you access. The level of your clearance allows you certain things to access God and certain things not to. Does everybody understand that? You earn that access by being consistent and faithful. You learn that access. I'm going to tell you another one. The more decisions you make that please God, the more he can trust you. Now, there's a difference between revelation and illumination. Revelation comes from the Father to you. In other words, there'll be those who have more revelation than others. Why? Because they have a higher sec uh, clearance, security clearance. Why? Because they're more faithful. They're more consistent. They're more alert. And in this, the individuals that get more revelation, the restraints of the flesh are tight. Does everybody understand it? Why? Because it says when those who do not have a revelation, what happens? The restraints get loosed, get removed. See, so it's important that you and I maintain not only a, a thirst and hunger for his righteousness, but we must maintain a place of hot, not lukewarm, not cold. This is not a religious act. It's not about our works. It's about our obedience. Does everybody get it? It's about our obedience. See, one of the things he's sharing with me right now, he said, because every, people's identities are still so scattered, even in the body of Christ, they're scattered. People are identifying themselves on knowledge. They're identifying themselves on the fellowships. They're identifying themselves on who they know. You and I are to identify ourselves in Christ. And the label that must be made for me and you from now on It's not a label of father, mother, sister, brother. It's not a label of pastor, teacher, evangelist. It's not any of these labels. When someone asks you who you are or what you do, you are a servant of the Lord. Everyone say, I'm a servant of the Lord. This is how it is. 
Why? Because God is exposing those who are Christ and Antichrist. That's it. There's no in-between anymore. And you and I are to be labeled. Our identity is associated with as servant of the Lord. Servant of the Lord. Well, what do you do? I'm a servant of the Lord. It's got nothing to do with what you work. It's got nothing to do with what you've done. It's got nothing to do with your failures or your successes. You are identified from the living God, from the throne room of God. Who are you? Remember, Jesus said it to them. Who do they say I am? He wanted to know if they identified themselves with him. You are a servant of the Lord. Now, a servant of the Lord is not a taker. He's a giver. See, we labor onto the Lord not to take. We're not looking for a reward. We're looking to rescue. We're looking to give what God has given us. See, this is a difference. We are servants. It's not about as much knowledge as you have. It's not about what you do. It's about who you serve. Amen? It's not about your bank accounts, how many things you have, how much prosperity you have. All of that's going to go anyways, isn't it? Amen? We are to be givers. Amen? A servant of the Lord gives. We labor onto the Lord. God knows what you need. Does everybody understand? God knows what you need. What does it say? Seek his kingdom and his what? Righteousness and all things will be added. Get counsel, correction, and direction. In a multitude of counsels, there's what? Safety and wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 4. So what do you do? I'm a servant of the Lord. Does everybody get it? This must be our label and our declaration all the time now. I am a servant of the Lord. Verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. Now the Spirit expressly says that in a latter time someone what? Depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. What did they sell? What are they giving up? Their identity. They're giving up their ID and their access to the things of God. Now they're limited to the things of access. Can a sinner access all the things of God? How about someone that's disobedient? No. In fact, many people are losing their clearances and don't even know it. So the only thing they can get is illumination because they can't get revelation. Oh man, everybody get this. I'm telling you, this is why the shaking is going on. This is why there's so much stuff going on. There's not many people that are in that place anymore. Remember, think about this. When the Israelites or the Hebrews were rescued from Egypt, bondage, over two million people. Only two of the original ones made it. Two. The rest had to die off. Does everybody get it? Two. That's why the word says the narrow path is what? Difficult. Difficult. You must maintain a level now. There's a level of thirst and hunger. There's a level of righteousness. There's a level of resistance of the enemy. There is a level. Let me tell you, when you're in that place and the divine nature is activated in a constant, nothing can affect you. You just continue to move. Move. Move in his presence. Move in his glory. You're a worshiper. You're a lover of his presence. Amen? We are, river of the, we are ch children of the river, right? We love to drink his presence. It says here that many are going to fall from the faith, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It's happening. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Why? They're not able to receive conviction anymore because they're so convinced that they know it all. Sounds like the whole Democratic Party, isn't it? <laughs> all the religious stuff. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods with God created by to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. They're, depart, they're departing from the faith by the surrendering of their identity. Well, let me share with you some. Many people are departing from the faith. 
and exchanging their identity because they, they want to avoid persecution. They had this, uh, I don't know if you saw it or not, but the, uh, I saw something on the news and, and they had this whole store. It was a whole grocery store. Nobody wore a mask. Nobody wore a mask. The owner, nobody. All the employees there, nobody wore a mask. And of course you have some democratic leftist moron who's a reporter, journalist, news dude, going in there and recording it all, going, look at these people! And, and, and condemning these people because they were refusing to submit to ordinances, although these ordinances are unconstitutional. And, and in this, there's somebody who's showing this video and he's saying, yes, it's amazing here. These people don't have a mask on. Look at all of them smiling and happy. And this other guy's going there condemning them all. And these were elderly people that were working there. I mean, most of them were retired people doing the cash register place. And they asked the owner, what's going on here? I said, oh, that phony plague, you mean? I mean, he's like, are you serious? We've had enough of this. We've had enough of this. Now, one state is already, I think it was uh, Iowa, has pff, opened up everything. Throw the mask out, we're done. See, but they want to keep you in a bondage. That's all it is, is bondage. And what are they doing? They're keeping people in fear. Heck, I got, we got picked up from the airport to go get our car. Everybody's got a mask on. Myself, my wife, and Joe that was with us. We didn't have a mask on. And there's a guy there going, hey, where's your mask, he tells me. I said, what are you afraid of? He said, he tells the driver, he goes, driver, this guy needs a mask. He didn't say nothing to me, even though he had two of them on. <laughs> he didn't say nothing to me. And I said to the guy, I said, if you got one, I don't need one. If you want to wear one, why should I? And he was grumbling, complaining. Oh, I'm going to surgery and this and that. I was, oh, man, what are you afraid of? That's all I was led to say. Believe me. My mind would go into a thousand miles. <laughs> you know. And my wife was, you know, I could tell my wife, one guy, easy now. You know. <laughs> But it's pretty sickening. People are exchanging their identity to avoid persecution and they're exchanging their way of access for selfish gain. Selfish gains. It's all over. It's happening. They cannot say that they are servants of the Lord. Does everybody understand? They can't say that they're a servant of the Lord. Matthew 10. Glory. Let's speak it. Verse 16. Behold, I send you at us sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as what? <coughs> Doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in the synagogues. You will be brought before governors. Boy, I'd like to be brought before a few governors. I know the people in New York would like to be brought before their governors. And everyone that's run by the leftists, they'd like to be brought before their governors. And I'm sure they have a lot of things to tell them. <clears throat> And you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony of them to them, to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about what or how you, what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. 
Now brother will deliver up brother to death. And father his children and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated for, by, my, by all but for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be what? Saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For surely I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he, he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they had called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they, will they call those who are what? Of his own household. Therefore, do not fear them. Do not what? Fear them. Hmm. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Do not fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and what? And body. I mean, this is powerful. They will hate you for being a servant of the Lord. Just by you now telling them, what do you do? I'm a servant of the Lord. They're going to hate you. But that's who we are. We cannot hide behind our talents, abilities, or carnal identity. We must come forth. We are servants of the Lord. Amen? To hold that identity, you must ask yourself, in what capacity are you serving? How are you serving? Labor, financial, tithing, intercession, teaching, and is your conduct and expression to the integrity of Christ? These are trying times and opportunities to grow. We're to be a witness so that we can advance in the kingdom and his trust. Our consistency is major. Our routine is consistent. We are to be first strikers. Amen? We must be first strikers. We must be fighters. As servants of the Lord, we must be warriors. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. We must be willing to go the extra mile. You know, so many people do things because their first thought is, well, what's in it for me? And that's not what it is for a servant of the Lord. It's got nothing to do with what's in it for us. It's what's in it for them. Amen? How can Christ be glorified in what I do? Do we labor on to the Lord? What capacity are we serving? And are we willing to be trained to serve in a deeper capacity? Amen? Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Deep things of God is a place called access. You access the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of a God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. That word might means cooperation. Amen? These things we also speak, and not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. In other words, they cannot receive the deep things of God. Why? They cannot receive. They don't have access. Access is denied. For they are foolishness to him. 
him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Again, deep things of God are granted to those with the higher clearance, ID. Who are you? What's your identity? The carnal and the sinner and backslider have no access. Only those with clean hands and a pure heart, servants of the Lord. Amen? Servants of the Lord that receive revelation from the mysteries and secrets, from the counsel of the Lord. See, it's an area where when you are deep in in these areas and you have access, you see things through. You're able to ask these things. There's such a thirst and hunger in your heart, even when you worship, that you want to go, you want to cross over. You know, God knows whether you're lukewarm. He knows whether you're hot. And he knows whether you're full of baloney. Somebody else, he knows whether you're a pretender or not. He knows what your thoughts are and the desires of your heart. He knows what our intents are. Amen? And it's not intense. Hello? Hallelujah. Hosea 4.6. Hosea 4.6. Glory. Glory. What does it say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or truth. Because knowledge understood is truth. Knowledge is not understood ain't truth. Amen? And because you have rejected this truth and this knowledge, I will reject you from being a priest for me. How many of y'all know that a priest is close to the Lord? And you must fulfill priesthood to become a what? King. So, I will reject you from being a priest for me. In other words, I will reject you from accessing me. Does everybody see this? And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Why? Because that goes down to your children then. Believe me, when God says you ain't got access to me anymore, in other words, there's a long distance relationship, not a close one. And it's usually because of sin, something that's offended God, S disobedience, our mouth, hello? Man, you want to get out of, lose your, you want to surrender your ID? Keep speaking stupid stuff. They'll push you right out, man. Is everybody okay? And he says, because then it goes right to your children. People are destroyed for not understanding the reverence, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The respect and honor and reverence to who he is. And everything we do, everything we think, everything we act on. Everything we choose. Does everybody get it? Everything. It should always be there constant if you're a servant of the Lord. Daniel chapter 2. In verse 20. You know, people are thinking that they, they're getting this vaccine, whatever, this vaccination for this artificial plague. They're probably giving everybody a placebo. Don't even know it. <laughs> and then there's part two to it. Then there might be part three or four because there might be multiple strands. But you still must wear a mask and keep yourself, you know, six feet under, I mean away. You know, when you begin to see the symbolic things that they recommend, they're just promoting death and fear. That's all they do. When you understand the demonic language, 
and symbolic demonic language that they do will blow you away. In the music industry, they have to promote demonic language in their songs. And every song, album, CD, whatever you want to call, is put into a place where they conjure demons connected to it. So that when it goes out, even videos, TV programs, it attaches to them. People have no, no idea. Remember Hollywood, what is it? <laughs> Tell a vision. Amen? Tell a what? Vision. Turn another station to a program. All of these things people don't understand. What's the word Hollywood mean? It's a witch's stick. When people begin to understand the demonic language, the witchcraft language, they have to put all their music. Now, those who want to be successful in the music industry must become a witch. And that doesn't mean mean, you know. They must practice witchcraft. I don't know if you know or not, but uh, what's his name? The quarterback that just won? His wife practices witchcraft. In fact, I heard she had an altar at the football and her kids were. And that's not why he, that team won. I don't know why they won, but I, I'm just saying. I guess they were a better team. Huh? Well, the other team was messed up, but it certainly wasn't witchcraft. Hello? Daniel chapter 20, or chapter 2, verse 20. And if you, I, I didn't watch halftime, but I'm sure I was, I, people who watched the halftime of the Super Bowl, it's nothing but a demonic ritual to influence the minds of people. In fact, one of them had, uh, one of the uh, journalists or whatever, news people, took a, a stop, fill, stop, film their picture, and the word Satan was up in there. I mean, they're out, they're blown right out. People are deceived. Oh, look at what entertainment. People are entertaining themselves and opening their, their doors to demonic activity and one receiving demonic for influence. In verse 20, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and rise, raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. Daniel had access as a servant of the Lord. Amen? And we who are also faithful servants will have this kind of access. In uh, Matthew 22. Matthew 22 and verse 1. Hallelujah. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, fat a cattle, are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm and another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. 
So those servants went out into the highways and alleyways and crack houses and so forth and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on wedding garments. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him, hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are what? Many called, but few are chosen. Present day challenges gives us the ability to grow, to witness, <laughs> and not become men pleasers. But become who? God pleasers. Amen. God is testing every challenge, everything that you're going through right now. Every shake. He wants to know if he's still first. If he's still number one. If you're living for the kingdom or you're still living for yourself. Are you cheating God? Amen. Are you robbing from him? Are you robbing time from him? Are you wasting time? Does everybody understand? Everything right now is critical. Everything. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians 4 verse 3. Let's speak it. And are you willing to be trained to earn access? Amen? For this, verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of loss like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but holiness. Therefore he who rejects us does not reject man but God. Who has also given us his Holy Spirit. His Holy what? Spirit. Sanctification set apart for his life, not ours. Amen. We need to keep our tongues sanctified, our minds sanctified, our desires sanctified, our will sanctified, our choices sanctified, sometimes even our purchases. Amen. Second Corinthians six. It doesn't mean we're perfect. We're going to make a mistake. Amen? But you're going to shake it off and get right back in position. That's, that's the whole thing, you know? In verse 14. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. Therefore, if you'll do this, if you'll come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. Let me share something with you. There are many things that are unclean. The world won't call them unclean. But God will call them unclean. So you and I must be alert and sensitive to the things that are unclean before God. Not before man. Amen. That makes a difference. Because the things that people are touching and agreeing with that is unclean before God. They lose their credentials of access. God will begin to diminish them, won't allow them that closeness. 
What does it say? There are individuals that God, disobedience and rebellion puts a person long distance relationship with God, not close. He will not allow them to get close. He said, do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. We're to be set apart, not touching the unclean things of the world <laughs> that promote rebellion and sin. In Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10, and verse 1. Everybody there? And when Jesus had called his disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who was called Peter. Andrew, his brother, James, son of Zebedee. And John, his brother, Philip. Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebius, whose surname was Thydeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who, will, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, and freely you have received, freely what? Give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tonics, tunics and sandals, nor staffs for a worker is worthy of his food. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who is in, who is in worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go out into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Does everybody understand? Now, I want, I want to share something quickly because he started off with the 12 originals. Amen? They stayed with Jesus. Jesus was training them up, even though one was going to betray him. He knew that. These are the original 12 that were sent out. Now, they all were doing the same thing, weren't they? No one was better than the other. But as they began, they all had the power and the authority. They all did whatever. They were anointed under the covering of Christ. Amen? But once he left, they were no longer covered. That's why he said, go to the upper room and wait for 10 days. Because they were no longer covered. The anointing was not covering them anymore. They were waiting for what? The anointing to recover them again. Amen? And go to Mark 5. And 35. Mark 5, 35. You will begin to see how Jesus, even with the original 12, began to allow some to access and some not. In verse 35. <clears throat> While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except who? Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. 
But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was laying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talafia Kamu, which is translated little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years old of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and say that something should be given her to eat. So again, he brought three disciples with him. Everybody else had not ac no access. Why? There must have been something that they gained his trust. Does everybody get it? Their clearance was higher than others. Go to Mark 13. <clears throat> Mark 13, verse uh, 3 and 4. Now as he sat on Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him what? Privately. Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign with all these things will be fulfilled. And Jesus, of course, answered them and began to say, Take heed that no one does what? deceives you. So again, now he allowed Andrew to come. Does everybody understand this? Now there will be times when he allows you access, but determining what you do with that access will determine whether you get that access again to that level. Does everybody understand? Matthew, Ma Mark 9. Verse 2. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining exceedingly white like snow, such as uh, no laundry on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they are talking with Jesus. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Because he did not know what, what, what to say, for they were greatly afraid. Come on, think about this. Just the three of them were brought up there, not, all, not the other disciples. And you know, they picked up many disciples on the way. So there was more than just the original 12 now. But only those three Jesus invited to go see the transfiguration. What a revelation. Snap. I'm surprised those guys ever woke up. In verse 7. Come on, they were greatly afraid. I mean, they, they've never seen anything like this. You talk about freak out. Changed their life. Life changing events by access. Wow. Verse 7. And a cloud came and overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud. Now they just saw this happen to Jesus. Now a cloud shows up. Whoa. They see Moses and Elijah. They're like, why? Let's build something. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. Then a cloud shows up with a voice. Can you imagine what happened after that? They must have been running into each other, you know. Ah. And a cloud came, overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Suddenly, when they had looked around, they saw no one anymore, but only Jesus with, himself, with themselves. Now, I, I do believe, I, I mean, all of a sudden, suddenly, I think they blacked out. When they came to, everything was different. They probably had to try and think this out. Did I just dream that? Did that really just happen? You know, when, when I had my visitation from the Lord, I mean, he made it so real because the manifestation was physical. I mean, my dog was fighting a serpent that manifested physically. There was no doubt about it. And everybody I tried to tell to, they told me, well, you're still on drugs. 
Was it a dream? Did you have a vision? No, dummy. It was real. Manifested. And the multiple things that happened afterwards. Why? Are you kidding me? That brought me such a thirst and hunger. I wanted more. I still want more. Hallelujah. We all should want more. Amen? So we see here again that there were another three that brought to this transfiguration. Now, think about this. That's considered the rapture. That's what the rapture is like because those two, Elijah and Moses, representation of those who are alive and then those who are dead that will be raised. And we will be transferred and transfigured with a glorified body in a twinkling of an eye. So think about this. Out of all of them, only three of them saw it. Think about how many people are going to be left behind who think that they're all right. Because they're feeding and clothing. They're sheltering. They're doing works. See, believing that their works is associated with their relationship, not being obedient. Remember, Jesus said, many will come to me in that day and say, They'll say all of these things they did, and he'll say what? I don't know you because you practice what? Lawlessness. See, they never had access anymore. Once they practiced lawlessness, that's what we were doing was the works of the Lord, but not the integrity of the Lord. There's a difference. No longer carrying the integrity of the Lord. Why? Because they didn't have access. If you don't get the access, you don't get the integrity either. Amen? Is everybody Okay. Who are we? Servants of the Lord. What do you do? I'm a servant of the Lord. No, no, no. I mean, really, what do you, I'm a servant of the Lord. And I have a word for you. Glory to God. We're going to close at Hebrews 10. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for all those times you rescued me from saying something. I think I can feel his hands so many times come out of my mouth. Poof. Hallelujah. Verse 19. <laughs> Guy, don't lose your access. <laughs> Verse 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us, which is sanctified for us, through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. I want to also say here, not forsaking to cross over. Assembling without crossover doesn't do you any good. Together, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Again, what times we are in. Phenomenal. Remember, the shaking is to expose those who are Christ and those who are antichrist. You're either in or out. If you're a backslider, you're an antichrist until you get right with God. Does everybody understand that? You cannot be a servant of the Lord and still walk in compromise and walk in carnality. A servant of the Lord walks in the spirit. He doesn't live for him. He lives for him. Amen? He lives from the future to the present, not from the past to the present. 
We are all being challenged. Amen. But resistance builds strength. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that this seed be sealed by the blood and protected with the anointing so it will grow, grow and bear fruit for your glory and that the reality of our identity is in you as servants of the Lord in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed.